Ooh, what's up people, Dobbsy Woods is right here and welcome to Game Gems, the, the show where I talk about games that all that I should really say that they actually are collectible and also really want to be put in your collection if you want to play them or you just want to collect them. Last episode we went ahead and did the Nintendo Wii and today's episode we are talking about the Game Boy Advance. Now the Game Boy Advance came out way after the Game Boy Color and the Game Boy Original. Now, of course, the developers went ahead and thought, said to themselves, "Okay, so we play. So we had a Game Boy which was uh, black and white, even though it was a load of shades of ugly green. Then we had the Game Boy Color, which we put a little bit of color, but we're still thinking of something that we need to do. How about um, have full color?" And it can be backwards combat. And hell of it, we'll also make another cartridge that is going to be different, exclusive to the next one. So they went ahead and did that. Besides that, they also made another console called the Game Boy Advance SP, which had a backlight on it, so you could see in the dark, which was inventive. And it's what we wanted. However, the downfall for that, though, it didn't play actual Game Boy games. Well, not all of them, but it played quite a few. And then they made the very smallest console they ever made, the Game Boy Advance Micro, which only played Game Boy Advance games, and it's super rare. Is it really worth buying it? More likely not, it's just a novelty item. But, I digress. But anyhow, today we are talking about five items on the Game Boy Advance. Five games, people. Now, like I said though, I'm trying my hardest. Yes, this is Nintendo stuff still, so no Mario. There is going to be a few loopholes here because there is other games that are connected to the Mario franchise. But, I cannot say anything else about that. But anyhow, they are going to be random as anything. We're going to start off with the easier one. Again, I do apologise if this shouldn't really be on the list. But, number one, it's extremely expensive. And two, there's a lot of fakes for it. And that is Pokemon Emerald. Pokemon Emerald is a game where you could try your hardest and try and obtain a legit one. The um, the game itself is just like any other Pokemon game. They have a load of backstory, hell of a great battles. Of course it's an RPG, so it's turn-based. You could capture Pokemon, train them up, evolve them. You guys know the story of Pokemon. It, I can't say any more about it. But why Pokemon Emerald? Well, Pokemon Emerald is actually the most rarest and most expensive one in the, in the Game Boy Advance library. Whether you have it as the, if you have it with the e-reader or on its own, or if you have it boxed, the loose cartridge is around about eighty to seventy pounds on its own. So think about how much it is as boxed. And I'm that much of a fanatic for it. I got one copy on that is just a cartridge. I have a Japanese one that's boxed. And I have one that's English unboxed, and the game, and both the English and the Japanese one is extremely expensive. Now, why is this, but still though, why is it classed as a gem besides the pricing? It's because there's so many people out there that are making fakes of this. You can spot fakes from miles away, people, very, very easily. And this one right here is a legit real one. And I've known that for many years because this is the original one that I bought back when it first got released. Now, a lot of people were saying to me, how can you spot fakes and all that? You can, sit, you can tell by their fakes, by the actual feeling of the actual cartridge, the sticker itself, the insides, and of course the codings on the actual chips. Now, there's nothing else I can really say about the Pokemon game, Pokemon Emerald. The, the soundtrack is belt, belt in, and with Pokemon um, Emerald, comparing it to Pokemon Ruby and Sapphire, you can get both... Rayquaza, uh, Groundon, and Kyogre in one game. In, in either Emerald or Sapphire, you can only get two of them. You can't get three of them. This is why this one's more superior. And this is why this one is actually one of the fan favourites for the whole world. Now, for me, of course, it's Pokemon Platinum. But this is a close second. Um, of course, you could get yourself the Regis. Fantastic. You can get the National Dex, so you can go ahead and get yourself the older Pokemon as well. It has Link Trade, so you can trade with old Pokemon games like Pokemon Fire Red and Leaf Green. 
And yeah, sure, there's also big massive events in this that a lot of people cannot get nowadays, which is, of course, the Eon ticket, which somehow, somewhere, you can still do if you have an e-reader, and the Deoxys event. And the new event as well, don't forget about them. But still, this is definitely a gem in my eyes. Pokemon Emerald, it's going in the vault. Next up, let's go ahead. And I've sadly, I have to do it though, because just like people know, I don't have a lot of Game Boy Advance games. I have a lot, a lot of childish games, and they're not really gems in my eyes. So I had to go ahead and go into my actual vault of collection of games. And that is... Final Fantasy Tactics. Now this is the Japanese version, I have the English version over there, but I'd rather show you the Japanese version because it's a lot more better. And it's actually moves more superior. It's got better um, controls if you, if you want to know. Now, if you guys are more known for tactical games, so you guys probably played Fire Emblem and all that lot, but Final Fantasy Tactics was one of the originators. They were flipping flawless, they were great. Um, it's got a great story, it's quite difficult. I've died so many times in this game I could ever think of. I've died on this more than any other Final Fantasy game I have ever played. This game is freaking hard. And of course I may not know how to play it probably because I'm not very good at tactical games. God, I'm going to wish I know how to play tactical games when the next Persona game comes out because that's a tactics game. But... Oh my god, people, this game is nails. It really is tough. Now, a lot of people may say to me that I don't know how to play it because I don't know tactics, etc, etc. But the, what this game keeps me going to play, even though I keep dying a lot of times, I love the story, the character spot on, the music's really, really good, and as well, the, the linear of the map of how to, when you're fighting, is really good as well. And your party members are very memorable as well. So it's like your mages, your your um, warriors, your red mage, your white mages, etc, etc, etc. They're really good. And don't get me started with the bosses. Oh my god, the bosses are ace. Really, really good. I can't say much about it though, people, because like I said, it's Final Fantasy. You guys know how much I like Final Fantasy. It goes in the vault. Next up... A lot of people are going to question me saying why, because it's an arcade game and it's an NES classic, but that got moved to the Game Boy Advance. Pac-Man! <laughs> <laughs> yes, I'm just literally digging them all out now. Uh -uh. So we have ourselves Pac-Man the OG. Now, why is this good on the Game Boy Advance than playing it on the NES or the actual arcade? You can't beat the arcade version, people. I'm sorry, but you can't beat the, arca the arcade version. But this is a very, very good close second because playing this on the Game Boy SP or your GameCube Game Boy Advance converter, which I have one myself, this game almost is exactly the same as the arcade version, but by a little smidge at the behind. What is it different between that? It's the controls. That's the only thing that's different. Um, if there was a converter where you can get yourself an arcade stick and everything, it'd been perfect. But there's nothing, there's nothing really existing like that anyhow. But if you guys want something quick and easy and play Pac-Man, this is the way to go. If you can't go ahead and walk around and get yourself an arcade machine, just get this in the Game Boy Advance SP, you're good to go. End of story. It goes straight into the vault. Next up... I really, really didn't want to put this in the gem thingy because it's already it's already classed as a gem because I have already announced it as a gem, but I had to put it in the list because there's not a lot of games for me in the Game Boy Advance. Kingdom Hearts! Chain of Memories! Now, I've already said it to you guys, I am not a fan of Kingdom Hearts Chain of Memories. However, the PlayStation 2 version, I'm not a fan of. The Game Boy Advance version is better. This is how it should be played. Do not play it on the PS2 or, the, of course, the remastered version. Of course, if you have nothing else, that's the way to go. But it is better on the freaking Game Boy Advance. Now, of course, a lot of people may disagree with me, though, but this is how it should have been, and it should have stayed like that. And, of course, when it came to the remaking everything, they should have still kept it like that, because it would look really good in HD. But they didn't, and they've gone ahead and remade it as actual Kingdom Hearts graphics. But we didn't need um, voice actors at all for this game. All we needed was boxes, which was perfect. 
the main part of this game that was concentrating was on the card part, and of course, a bit of the story. Of course, the story was important for the whole Attack in Arts um, part. So if you want to know more of the story, you go ahead and play the PS2 version, which was the better one because it had voice acting. But if you were not bothered and you want to play a good card game with a bit of action, this was the way to go. And I really do enjoy the, the Game Boy Advance version more than the PS2 version. But I got to play the PS2 version just so I can know the story. That's how much of a freaking fan I am. Goes in the vault. Final one though, people. <sighs> Legend of Zelda. Four Swords. What can I say? It's Four Swords. And it's with Link to the Past. So, you could play this as Link to the Past. Fair enough. But you can also mix it with the Four Swords. Oh my god, match made in heaven. But yet they still haven't remade it properly. Yes, they have done Link to the Past as a remake. We know. Okay, I get it. They've done it a few times. But we want a proper remake for Four Swords and Link to the Past. We want this properly. Come on. Come on, Nintendo. Remake it, for God's sakes. This is freaking amazing. It needs to happen. I don't care if it's either going to be in 3D or old 2D graphics. Just freaking do something. Put it on the actual homebrew consoles. Hell, it. Put it on the Game Boy Advance um, subscription. If it is there now when this is being pre-recorded, oh my God, thank God. But if not, God damn it, please, Nintendo, please put it on. I can't say much about it because I've done it before on this SNES. This SNES jet goal, um, game gems. Story spot on. Controls was fantastic. Mixing it with four swords makes it even more of a freaking hell of a treasure right there. I just can't put my finger on it though. Is why on earth has Nintendo not released it as a remake yet? Or a remaster or anything like that. Probably they're waiting for the right time because, of course, they've done. They've gone ahead and made Tears of the Kingdom. They're probably going to have a bit of a break now, and probably they'll go ahead and make another remaster before they go ahead and make another one, which will probably be in another four or five years' time. But that's the Game Boy Advance stuff, people. Hope you guys enjoyed it. That's what I've chose in this game. We got ourselves Pokemon Emerald, Final Fantasy Tactics, Pac-Man, Kingdom Hearts. And The Legend of Zelda Link to the Past Four Swords. If you guys enjoyed it, make sure you smite, left, leave a like, subscribe, comment down below, and I'll see you guys next time for another episode of Game Gems. To people I'm still going to see you guys subscribing, I'll see you guys next time. Cheerio!